Alright. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome to our um, Remembrance Sunday service. Um, today, of course, we, we remember all those who died in wars, particularly the first two wars, uh, uh, world wars, but of course in all wars. And this is an opportunity that we use to pray for peace in our world. We will come in about 20 minutes or so to the uh, time of silence, wherever we, wherever we get to there, we'll stop and do the time of silence. And, um, but before we begin, let's just have a moment of quiet as we pray. For oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. We come, O oh God, to hear your voice, to be transformed by your spirit. We ask for your presence to be with us in this service. Bless us so that we can go into the world and be a blessing to others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, so let's, uh, let's say this, the prayer of preparation together, which is on your sheet. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires are and from whom your secrets are hidden, thanks the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The psalm I've chosen for this morning is Psalm 91, and we're going to read it um, alternately. So I will read the odd verses, and if you will join me in the even verses. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say it. save you from the power of snare and from the deadly pestilence. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, The Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling.
Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commands and to live in love and peace with all. Let's have a moment of silence as we think of our own failures and our own shortcomings before God. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and I write what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing our next song. My hope is built on nothing less. And of course, we're going to do that with you. Let's start. Let's start.
8. And we're going to have our reading now for the second lesson of the school. Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 to 13. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, labouring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. We hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They're not busy, they are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. And as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, we are going to have an act of remembrance now, uh, which is coming up to about two minutes' time, which is at 11 o'clock. Um, I'm going to ask you to stand when I get there, but before we get there, um, I do want to say something about some of the stuff that we have here. Um, <clears throat> as you know, uh, in our parish, the people who, uh, many people have died, uh, of course, in the, in the two world wars. And so what has happened is um, we have two sets of, uh, of, of memorial here. On the one hand, could you turn this up a little bit more for me? Because I know there's some people are struggling to hear. Thank you. Um, so the, the wooden, the wooden uh, memorial is from St. James Parish, uh, as you know St. James Church no longer exists and so we have the St. James Memorial as well, including the book, this book, from St. James. These, these are from our parish, St. Saviour's Parish. Now, of course, Deborah has done some history stuff on the back there that I would love for you to, to read. But um, she's giving me a bit, and it says, A war memorial was unveiled and dedicated at a special service on Saturday, November 19, 1921, at 4 p.m. The memorial in white marble was sighted over the front, over the front in the old church. We no longer have that memorial, but there's a picture of it. So, uh, that never has put up so, of that memorial. But what has happened is that the, the names of that memorial have been placed on these um, on, on, the, uh, in, 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 on these sheets. So and they are kept at the back there for um, for posterity. And so there are a number of people, of course. I, I won't read out the names, I'm sorry, because there are too many names to read out. But it says the dedication across the top of the memorial was to the glory of God and an undying memory of the following men from the church and parish who died in the service of their country in the Great War, 1914 to 1919. That was the first world war, of course. And since then, we've had more for the second world war. Um, and as I said to the children on, uh, at St. James, uh, when I did my assembly this week, we don't want a third. Okay, just let's, uh, let's get that thinking. We have one, we have a first world war, we have a second, but during this time of remembrance, we are to pray that there will not be a third. 
Okay, so um, uh, so the time of remembrance is a time to pray. Remember those who died, but also pray that there will not be a third one more. That we will live in peace. So let's stand, and uh, we will have our time of remembrance, which is now eleven o'clock. So I am going to read a prayer, and we are going to have some words, and then we 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 have the time of supper. So let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of the peoples of the world. So let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life. Hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. They shall not. They shall not grow old, as we are but are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. And now the post is going to sound. We're going to listen to the last post sound, and we have the two-minute silence. And the, the regard is going to break the law of the, the sound. The silence.
And when do you go home? The travelers can take me. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Let's say together the comment. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things, in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority, and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to this just and gentle rule who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I know it's hard to learn silence when we make noise a lot, but it's good. Um, we're going to sing our next song, Lord, I Come for Your Throne of Grace. And then Janetta is going to come and read the gospel and preach to us.
temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name claiming I am he and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events, and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. So you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm, and you will win life. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Lord. Please be seated, and the children will go to church. Preserve freedom 
for those who followed and saw God as part of that victory. Today is known as Remembrance Sunday. It is a day of remembrance and also a day of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to our great God and Savior. It is an important event in the church's calendar because it reminds us of those who fought and many died in the first and second world wars and wars around the globe. It was an effort to bring about peaceful conditions for generations of people to come. Remembering such persons should stir within us a sense of gratitude and appreciation for all who gave their lives in this cause. Yes, we remember with thanksgiving the sacrifice of the maid to enable the freedoms and the life we now enjoy. And we remember them in prayer before God. However, as we honor the past, we must also exercise faith in God's promised future. The true God, who is the source of life and hope, now and forever. Today, we will not forget to say, from the rising of the sun to its setting, we will remember them. Simultaneously, we remember daily on a rising to the last nightly ember, the sun of righteousness, arising with healing in his wings. The gospel lesson this morning from Luke 21 is set in Jerusalem. And in verse 6, Luke reports how Jesus, overhearing people marveling at the beauty of the temple, made this pronouncement. As for these things which you see, the days will come in which there will not be left here one stone on another that will not be thrown down. The temple was huge and ornate. So you can well imagine their shock at the words of Jesus. However, Sure enough, the temple was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, who leveled the city of Jerusalem and scattered the people. The effect was both devastating and demoralizing. They would be without a homeland for the next 1900 years. They had allowed the magnificence of the temple to overshadow the magnificence of God. Because of this tragic occurrence and having survived, it is said that the survivors and the next generation became stronger and more resilient. Something I would like us to think about this morning. So often, out of tragedy, even death, new life springs forth more abundant than ever. Jesus is the sun in our temple and there is healing in his wings. Of course, we must apply our faith and then do the action God tells us. How though can we exercise faith and hope? The Bible states that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Isn't that what we're doing today? Right now? We must listen to the word of God, remembering that the victory is the Lord's, which he offers to us. With this mindset, Remembrance Sunday will not only be a time to remember those who have fallen in wars, but also to remember our great God, 
who gives us the victory as we let him live in and through us. Jesus faced death on our behalf and offers and affords us salvation today and eventually everlasting life in his kingdom. Do you believe this good news? Do you? Will you avail yourself of this? Will you? Endurance is also key. Even if we suffer now, we must hang in there and even when a world seems to fall apart, example, someone near or dear dies, or we fear the worst in some situation, we must persevere with hope in our hearts, trusting God to preserve and prevail. The Bible reading went on to say that he is our refuge and we will be safe in him. Romans 5 verse 3 to verse 5 states, Moreover, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Now, how comforting are those words? All found in the Bible. Additionally, those who have experienced the hardships of life have a witness. They have a witness of faith. And they can share this and, able, and they're able to weather the storms of life. Brothers, sisters, friends, I ask a question, is there a temple whose sacrifice by God's grace is pure and holy, where humanity can meet the true God? What is the answer? The answer is yes, it's John is shaking his head. The temple is no vast structure. Yet it dominates over all. I speak of the body of Jesus Christ. We read in John 2, 19 that Jesus declared in Jerusalem before he was crucified, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. He was not referring to a building. He meant his own body. How do we know this? Again, the scriptures reveal that Jesus was crucified, he died, and was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. Sinless Jesus died to grant forgiveness for our sin and to bring us to everlasting life. Hallelujah. This is the new temple, the everlasting temple, raised not by human construction, but by the mercy, the grace, and the victory of God. Jesus rose from the dead and promised all who unswervingly follow him the same fate, the harmonious and mystical body of Christ. As Archbishop Stephen Cottrell said, just as a soldier fights under the banner of their regiment, whose colors march ahead, and whose presence raises morale, so too Christians should live their lives under the banner of Christ. What is this banner? Brothers and sisters, it is the cross. The cross is the sign of peace. Not just
just the silence after the guns have stopped firing, but true reconciliation and everlasting life. Yes, Jesus' crucifixion, death, resurrection, and ascension to heaven assures us if we avail ourselves by putting faith in his ransom sacrifice, all who die will be resurrected to everlasting life in his kingdom. What a prospect. Jesus laid down his life for us, you and me. The least we can do today is pledge our allegiance to God Almighty as revealed in Jesus Christ. Jesus has promised to return in glory and establish his kingdom on earth, bringing real peace, lasting joy and happiness, within and without. Brothers and sisters, we have the Bible, the Word of God, as our manual and guide. So many precious truths to learn. For example, recorded for us is, is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, known as the Beatitudes. And these reassure us. Here he enumerated divine patterns of justice and mercy. The doors of the temple are open. Let us prepare to enter. We enter with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. And we remember his love, extreme love, and his forgiveness when we partake of the emblems, the bread and the wine, which represent his body and his blood. Do not take this lightly. We must come to the altar with open hearts to gain forgiveness and to receive life, everlasting life for you. Healing from every ailment. Matthew 5, verse 3 the, to verse 12 records Jesus' sermon to us. I'll be quite brief, but you will follow along what I'm saying. It is written, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Literally, this means we must recognize our inability to help ourselves. We must confess this and repent and turn to God. That's the first thing. He went on to say, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Again, this means if we listen and we are teachable, that's what the old English word meek means, teachable, we will be the ones to possess the earth, possess the land. Again, he says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. All sadness goes when we truly repent and we gain forgiveness. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So at last, true justice will reign. We will receive or just rewards. Brothers and sisters, if we are to be the beneficiaries of all these written promises and blessings, what sort of persons ought we to be? How can we live purposeful lives dedicated to Jesus, the perfecter and finisher of our faith? How can we offer our lives and all our gifts and talents to be used in the service of God. We accept with thanksgiving the sacrifice that Jesus made for us at the cross and repent. We turn around, we leave sin and 
turn to Christ. Yes, we give thanks to the God of ages past and our only hope for years to come. The only temple that will remain. So we look to the past and learn. We live in the present and trust and obey. We wait, we watch, we pray. As Michael Four says, when the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. We also tell others of God's saving grace, knowing that nothing we give as members of God's household is ever lost. Our prayers for ourselves and others, our labors, our suffering, our spiritual fight, everything is placed at the altar of Christ's successful sacrifice, where saints and angels are one with us. And hallelujah sounds forth forever. So even now, let us together say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen! Amen!
for our growing in your likeness, bring the life of Christ to mind, that by our response and service, earth its destiny may find. Amen. So as we remain standing, let us say the creed together. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. We will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please do take a seat. We are going to be led in our prayers by a number of voices this morning. Uh, the, the response in our prayers this morning is, Merciful God, give us your peace. That is a response. Merciful God, give us your peace. We remember today those who have died in any kind of war throughout your world. Soldiers who perished in the horror of battle, innocent people buried beneath the rubble.
from bomb attacks. Men, women and children brutally attacked and murdered in their villages. Remember, we remember especially those victims of the two world wars. Remember those who came home with terrible injuries, both physical and psychological, and those whose loved ones never returned. Merciful God, hear us your peace. Remembering the conflicts of the past, and the sacrifices which were made, we pray for our world, where war is still a grim reality. Lord, we remember those who have lost their lives. Help <coughs> us to renew our fight against cruelty and injustice, against prejudice, tyranny, and oppression. We remember the people of Ukraine suffering the war being waged against them by Putin and the Russian army. We pray for an end to this war and for them to enjoy peace and prosperity once again in their land. We cry out to you in the darkness of our divided world. Let not the hope of men and women perish. Let not new clouds rain death upon the earth. Lord, hear our prayer for the multitude in every country who do not want war and are ready to walk the path of peace. May their voice be heard and may they not lose heart. Merciful Father, Lord God, we pray for the leaders of the nations at this time, asking you to pour out your spirit of reconciliation on them. Give them a longing to bring freedom from fear and freedom from want for all peoples. Give strength and courage to those who bear heavy responsibilities for the peace of the world. Remember our King, Prime Minister and Government, that they may lead us in righteousness, peace and justice. We pray also for the Christian Church, called to witness your love in this generation. May Christians work with all people of goodwill to break down the barriers which divide us. Help us to show respect for one another and build a community where there is harmony and understanding. Merciful God, give us your peace. Merciful God, we pray for all who face difficulties in their personal lives, problems in their families, in their friendships, in their neighbourhoods or in their workplace. Help them to be calm in times of uncertainty and patient with those around them. Show us when we can help and when show us when we can help and give support to others around us. Help us to know that you have taught us to solve our conflicts in peace without violence that you have called us all to be peacemakers and to do to others as we would have done to us. Help us to forgive the hurt we suffer even as God in Christ has forgiven us. Merciful God, give us your peace. On this day of remembrance, our hearts and prayers go up to all who mourn the loss of those we have loved. When we lose someone close, we feel that part of us dies as well, but part of them lives in us. Give us strength and understanding 
to honor and cherish the gift. Help all those who are recently bereaved to find consolation in Jesus Christ, who died and rose again, thus giving us hope of the resurrection life in Him. Merciful God, give us your peace. Lord, we pray for the sick and the suffering, especially those in our community and those we know. Bring your healing touch upon them. May they know that we are near to them, even and especially in their pain. Merciful God, give us your peace. Lord, finally, we pray for ourselves that we may all put our confidence in you. O oh Lord, you know we are often filled with fear and forbidden. Give us courage and deepen our trust. You are a rock which nothing can shatter. You are a peace in the midst of the storms of life. You are a refuge from the challenges of this life. On you we can place the whole weight of our lives. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's say together the prayer of the prayer at the top of uh, page five. Gracious God, for all you have given us, all you will give us, and all you give us here and now, we offer you our thanks and praise. Bless this offering out of our money and of ourselves to be used in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord.
What is it? Yes. Yes. It comes in like a flood. Uh, yes. All right, so let's pray as we begin. Lord God, may the gifts we offer bring us your abundant forgiveness and give us freedom to serve you with our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your, your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner and gives dignity to the despised. In his face, your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, Forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 thou art power and might, and that the earth are full of your glory, the Son of the eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the eyes. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine are poured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night, he met, he was, not the night before he died, he had suffered with his friends and taken bread. We praise you. We broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take this, eat it. This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus. When the supper was ended, he took a cup of wine. Again, he praised you. He gave it to them and he said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord, before life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with our blessed Savior, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the holy apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. So we say together the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Now of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Now of God, we take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Amen. So if you are a Christian in any church, of course, please do come forward to receive the body and blood of our Lord. If you're not, then you may still come forward and keep your hands at your side and I offer the Lord's blessing for you. While we are um, Yes. Yes. <laughs> While we are having the communion, we are going to have some songs, but the family is going to play the first song for us when I survey the Lord's cross.
service this morning as we come to the close of our communion service, our remembrance day service. We want to remember before God at the table of God's mercy those who are on our hearts this week, those we have been praying for, and we entrust their care into God's gracious hands. We want to continue to pray for our sister Sue and Hannah and Daphne and Miriam, our brother David. We also want to remember and pray for our sister Maxine, who had surgery this week and is home uh, now, um, healing. We also pray for Noel as, she as he cares for her. And uh, we pray for them at this time of recovery for Maxine. We also want to remember our sister Surya Johnson. Um, Johnson is here this morning. Surya, Surya had a surgery this week as well, and uh, she is also recovering. So we want to remember Surya Johnson's uh, wife and, uh, and keep them in our prayers this week as we go forward as well this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for one another. We continue to pray for peace in our world. As I said, this is an opportunity, a time to remember the horrors of war and ask the Prince of Peace to bring peace in our fragmented and broken world. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when wars shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, in whose perfect realm no sword is drawn but the sword of justice, and no strength known but the strength of love, guide and inspire all who seek your kingdom that peoples and nations may find their security in the love which casts out all fear through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God of peace, whose Son, Jesus Christ, proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to holiness of life. Look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power, make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we have our Thanksgiving prayer, we want to have an act of commitment prayer as we go forward this, this remembrance Sunday. So let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage, and comfort others, and support those working for the relief of the needy, and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Let's say it together. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind, in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Amen. We say our prayer with thanks. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So before we go this morning, a few notices to draw your attention to. Uh, for this week and the coming weeks ahead of us. Um, this week on, well, first of all, this afternoon, uh, we, 
the, 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 confirm the, con the, the confirmants, that is, those who are going to be confirmed. <laughs> next week, by the way, next week is confirmation. Next week, Sunday evening at 6.30 at St. John's Church. So do come out. There will be some of our people, some of our young people will be baptized and confirmed at that service. So this afternoon, uh, immediately right after this service, at 1 o'clock, we go down to St. John's for our for rehearsal. So I will be taking the young people down at 1 o'clock for rehearsal at St. John's this afternoon. Um, so that's next week. Uh, this week coming up as well, we, the 15th, we want to fill the shoe boxes. I've seen more stuff come. Still doesn't look like we're getting 100 yet, but uh, still early days. We still have a few more days. Um, and so that's Tuesday morning. We're going to meet here. As many as can come at 10 o'clock. Um, we, we, we have prayer at 9.30 and then we meet at 10 to fill the boxes. The shoe boxes. It's going to take us a good, a good while to get through them. So as you most of um, Tuesday morning going into the afternoon. So do come along if you can. Make more hands make light work. I mean, it can be confusing as well, but <laughs> that's not the matter. More hands make light work. So the more we have, the quicker we get through it. A um, few other things. Uh, just We also have PCC meeting on Thursday evening. There is a notice here for the day of prayer, uh, the World Day of Prayer. I don't want to make mention of that notice. Do take note of it. Our sister Jean, who's not here today, of course, Jean had a fall a few weeks ago. Um, and then, you know, Jean is quite frail these days, getting frail. This is the nature of the body, isn't it? So uh, we want to keep Jean in prayer. But one of the, I want to highlight this because Jean Murphy has been our representative on the World Day of Prayer Committee for many years. You know, uh, you know, when I think of Jean, I hear Jesus' word, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, I, 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 if anybody is going to get that, it will be Jean. But she needs someone to take over from her. Um, she can no longer do that, as you know. So if you are able to, to be on that committee, the World Day of Prayer Committee, which happens, I think, around March, or somewhere around there, uh, when they gather, and we've done it here many times, and they, they go to different churches. Um, do let me know, or, um, or Dorothea, because Dorothea is, organizes this uh, for you as well. So please, pray, think about it. It is something that you can do. Um, for um, as we go forward, we, we, we need to relieve Jean of this responsibility. She feels that if there's nobody else coming forward, she must somehow carry on, and uh, that's not acceptable at all. Um, all right, let's leave the rest of the notices. Let's talk about our visitors. Uh, we have some visitors here this morning. We have at least um, uh, one I know. I'm George. George over there, George Hilton, he's, uh, let's get straight on. welcome George. And George is actually visiting us from the uh, United States, he, uh, he didn't come directly just to come here, of course. <laughs> so, I met him some, uh, some time ago, we had a funeral here, and I thought, was this your, your grandma? Your aunt, your aunt, and he, he was here at that service, um, he's himself a minister. Um, in America, and um, so he's joined us. He's back to sort out issues, as you know, when it comes to bereavement. And uh, so it's great to welcome George, welcome to our regular service. <laughs> so that's for funerals. Eunice, who's Eunice? I got a new Eunice. Ah, welcome, Eunice. <laughs> Eunice is visiting us from Milton Kings, yes? Uh, did you come directly to come here? Praise God. The Lord, the Lord brought you here. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And God bless you as you go back. And George, God bless you as you return to America for the coming weeks as well. Thank you. 
and I'll say more visitors, um, just to welcome that few people who have been out for some time, but it's good to see you guys as well, <laughs> as usual. All right, um, any birthdays this week? Her birthday, when is her birthday? Wednesday, how old are you going to be? Six, six, what's your name? Ria. Ria. Ria is going to be six this week. So Ria, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. Do you understand? Anybody else having birthday this week? No? All right, we're going to sing happy birthday to Ria. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and harmony, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all you love today, this week, and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord Amen. in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Please do have a look at the memorial stuff that, uh, that Deborah has made about this. Brilliant.